All right, this is the test run. I've picked up multiple cheap, but ultimately effective tools. These silver tweezers all came from the Harbor Freight Watch Repair Toolkit. I've actually taken some and changed up the tips a bit. You can see that these here are sharper and thinner. These are a bit fatter. These were basically the same when they first came. The brass ones that I have are some cheap ones, I believe, off of Timu. In fact, this one is still in the packaging. And there's the information on that. And this is how it comes and AM for anti magnetic. These do need to be redressed once you pick them up, but if you are able to dress them properly, then they end up working out really well. And as long as you realize that even with expensive brass tweezers, if you squeeze them too hard they end up deforming at the tip and you can't really use them be gentle with these this is a call it pin vise that has multiple sides to it there is another Pin vise in here comes with multiple sizes. This I believe I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Oh no, sorry, Hobby Town. This one was picked up at Hobby Lobby. It's a you know multiple size three jaw pin vise. It's okay for some things, but not a whole lot. Works pretty well, swivel head. These are a couple of hand pullers picked up off of Timu. Now I didn't like the way that they were dressed when I first picked them up, so I ended up redressing them to make them a little bit more usable. A little bit more sh a little bit sharper that one's bent a little bit it needs to be bent back into place but that's okay for what it's doing works okay of course some cheapy quote unquote made in Switzerland oilers in fact one of these when I got it the tip was bent in half but I was able to bend it back and make it work these are, of course, different sizes. These hand pushers came off of Timu. They are of multiple sizes on both sides. They work fairly well in a pinch. Of course, you got your little hold down stick. This probably came out of some watch repair kit I'm sorry phone repair kit you know just a fairly generic you can resharpen the ends if you need to of course a, a good razor knife is always a good thing to have I really like the feel of this one the lid that comes on it, it's nice and beefy and it's actually able to fit on the back which is nice so I'll have to lose it because I'm really good at that of course you got your crystal puller this came with the oilers and it's just a cheap little plastic piece as long as you don't gouge into it you're not gonna pick up any of the plastic these are some of the cheap case movement holders 
what you can do with these is redress the points that are going to be holding your movements take the the paint off of them and it ends up working out to where it's sharp enough to hold the movements without them coming out with too much pressure I've done quite a few different movements with these as long as you take the paint off and, and kind of dress up these steps a little bit, it ends up working out really well. Obviously you're going to need Rodico. I have a box that I did pick up of some actual Rodico. So this is probably one of the few name brand things that I have picked up. Of course I picked this up on... I believe Amazon is pretty cheap this loop I really like it's just a handheld it's one that I use I use it carry it with me it's lighted it's a uh, 43x which is pretty nice take it with me to different places when I go to look at watches it's used to use that when servicing but I've gotten some better ones since a case pad it does have a, an indention in the center so that you don't have to worry too much about deforming your pinions if you sit it right in the center it, it goes down and has a place to go down into it's not a it's not the best one it is fake leather pleather if you would works out pretty well and I've got the screwdriver set this is a Starrett screwdriver that I've had for a long time and it's a very small not quite the smallest but it's a, a pretty small tip and then these are some a set that I picked up for $13 off of Amazon. It came with a bunch of extra tips. Two bags full of extra tips. Not a bad thing. As long as you dress them up properly, they work just fine. I've not really ever had to use this really tiny one. This is the smallest one. You can see here I've 3D printed, not the best 3D print mind you, but it works as a carousel for my screwdriver set. And um, I've got them set up and so that you know it goes from biggest to smallest and it works out really well for what it is. In fact I think these two are in the wrong position but be that as it may this one I tend not to even keep in there since I don't use it very often if I need it I got it in a box safe and sound this is a a tool that I made out of some old guitar strings <laughs> some heat shrink stripped three of the ends if you've ever worked on a kiff triori style spring for the shock settings they are horrible they have three places that need to be pushed down all at once while it's turned you can buy a tool for that i don't use it very as often to justify buying a tool and that's what this whole channel is about, is not paying a ton of money to do what you need to on watches. So this works out really well. I've polished up those ends and kind of sharpened them up a little bit. They're still pretty dull on the ends, so it's not like it's going to dig into anything. But they're polished up so that you can... 
put it on the gift triori, push it down and turn it. It stays together really well. If I ever need to, I can pull more wraps off and sharpen it up, but with what it's doing, it's really never going to fail. Of course, I've got my cleaning machine. I've 3D printed this basket. I've gone through a few different iterations of the design. One of the first designs I had had printed it out of PLA and it ended up deforming and some of the pieces came off. I at first decided to put the mesh on the basket itself. Um, didn't work out as well as I thought so I moved over to ABS and with it being as thin as it is the ABS didn't want to print very well. I ended up finding out that this sort of keyway design wasn't the best because it would allow a lot of shakiness when it was put on to the connection. So you would put this on here and it would just kind of you know have a lot of play that it could move around. I've since changed the design to where when you put it on it's just a tight fit so it doesn't move around and then I also because I still had issues with this this whole piece broke off which probably isn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme but I ended up thickening it up quite a bit that way it would be more sturdy less prone to warping with the heat drying cycle and it this is not the attachment anymore I've since changed that design as well but it's still the same straight design with a slight indentation up so that it catches <laughs> then there's the the baskets that I've designed myself to hold the movement parts I've got several designs in fact I'm missing one of the designs I don't know where it is I'm sure it'll show up eventually and it's just a an open piece whereas you know you've got this I typically use for my train of wheels put one wheel in each one of these so that they don't knock into each other or anything else this is probably one of my favorites to use which is why I have actually printed up multiples of these designs it's good for you know holding families of pieces and you know intermediate bridges larger parts also got one that's just a two smaller pocket design useful for some things but not a whole lot this is one of the three pocket designs looks like a peace sign and then to go on the top to kind of cap it off it's just a small ring so typically it'll be four of these stacked on yeah stack four of these in here and this goes on the top and then the it presses it down now the, the completely open basket that holds the movement the main plate of the movement is taller than the rest of them and that allows me to get the mainspring in as well. Let's 
searching for it and I'm not able to find it for some reason. My ADHD brain doesn't want me to find things, so it just tells me, oh, just put it anywhere, it's fine. But those are also printed using ABS to resist warping when in the heated chamber for the drying section. This was a fun little project to do, the whole cleaning machine, which you've seen the videos for. As a matter of fact, I've, I've even reiterated designs for that. I also have, of course, one of these for the can and pin in. You just pull it up. Works really well. Found that one side of these ended up coming off of the plastic, but I was able to put it back on. Use a soldering iron and sort of melt that plastic back into place to hold it. Works just fine. Sometimes you do have to modify the cheap tools, which is fine because, you know, even Bergeon screwdrivers have to be redressed. Even the, the expensive tweezers have to be redressed occasionally. These, I haven't had to redress a whole lot because they were pretty good. I also picked up one of these fiberglass pins. I use it occasionally if I've got some real bad corrosion, some rust that I kind of want to get up. You don't ever want to go to town on a movement with this, but, you know, brushing it a little bit can help get rid of some of the nastier stuff. As far as loops, I picked up one of these cheapy loop. Comes with multiple different this is a 20x it goes anywhere from 5 to 10, 15, 20, and 25x. I've also, for the majority of what I'm work, what I do, I have just taken a piece of wire, molded it to go around one of these cheap loops that you can pick up there again at Harbor Freight in one of their kits. And you get, I think, a 5x or 2x, 5x, 10x, and maybe a 15x I don't remember exactly I think there's a 4x or maybe something in there but this works really well kind of like the ones that you know jewelers use wrapped around their head this is just something that you know I had some wire so I was able to wrap it around and it has a little bit of flexibility on the, the eyepiece I have had it come off a couple times, but, you know, it just pops right back on, so it's not that big a deal. Speaking of the tools, I did pick up one of these hand pushers. I ended up having to drill some cross holes in this so that it would stay on the shaft. I also on, on I have a little portable lathe took and uh, remade this sleeve because it was very loose and now it's still somewhat loose but nowhere near what it was. It's a, a bit better tool modified to serve my purposes. This I really like. I One of the few expensive things that I did pick up was proper watch oils. And in order to keep them all upright and 
in a safe position. I designed and printed this up to hold all of them. I am probably going to just 3D print some letters or some numbers and you know, have them for 90-10 and 94-15, all of the different grades. And picked this up on eBay, a guy that repackages them in a clean room environment. But this box is really nice. It's you know designed to where it holds them, and I can just set it down. Don't have to worry about the bottles falling over. Of course, got one of the, the rubber balls. So much better than trying to scrape things up if you can use it. Works on about 95% of the watches. You do get those that. Occasional watches that just don't want to cooperate and the back just does not want to come off. So, I also have a couple of these. The other one is in another case. I have taken this one and redressed those. I had a watch that had smaller, you know, thinner indentations, and I dressed it up because it was had some burrs on it. It was pretty, sh pretty sharp. I took the paint off of this one just because I didn't like that nasty blue color. But in a pinch, these things work pretty well. You know, just be careful when you're using them. Don't try and get too quick with them. When you're putting them on a watch, you want to make sure that it's not just kind of loose on there. You want to tighten it onto the movement. Not to where you're going to mess up the movement, but enough that it will grip on. I have also picked up a screwdriver sharpening helper haven't used it much but I'm sure if I get a screwdriver that really messes up on me I'll be able to really get a good angle this is good for if you don't have the, the dexterity to hold your screwdrivers at the right angle while you are sharpening them you put this in here get it set up so that at the when it's pushed through and at the right angle you want to make sure and whatever you are using to sharpen make sure that it's sitting flat how it currently is go one way flip and you want to use the same amount of strokes on each side so I would suggest one stroke, flip, one stroke, flip, one stroke until it's not completely sharp on the end because you do want some flat. You don't want these to be completely sharp. But like I said, I haven't really used this a whole lot. So... I've been able to sharpen them well enough with just using my my own hands. As a matter of fact, what I use to sharpen these is a work sharp sharpener that has a 600 grit, a 320 grit, and a ceramic stone. Obviously this will not work on something this small I do have some other stuff that I could use but what I was saying with that is you wanna make sure that it's sitting flat when the whole time that you're moving it and an, an important thing to remember when sharpening is always go against 
the point. Don't go backwards because you end up rolling a burr on your flat and then you have to work to get that burr off by you know running it flat pain to worry about here I was able to find that other one and so you can see here that it is taller so it ends up pushing all the the whole stack up enough that when you put this top piece on it actually creates a bit of compression you can see there creates a bit of compression to hold everything in there so it's not just flopping around that was a design choice on the part of the bottom the rest of them don't really need to be as tall and as far as these go I just you can use a soldering iron just to you know dab them around a little bit and this is just some aluminum I, f I find that it works a little bit better because it's not woven it's you know just one piece that's been uh, I'm pretty sure the process they use for this is a skimming process of sorts so the other thing you can use we had a an old griddle that the legs broke on it and it's literally a hot plate and so turning it into a hot plate for this kind of thing was a perfect idea my wife got a new griddle I got a hot plate everybody's happy the hot plate could be used for soldering stuff too um, as long as you don't get too hot it could probably even be used for adjusting the depthing on pallet forks on the stones the shellac um, one of the other things that I've 3d printed I don't want to spend any money on a set and this is just a cheapy box that I got from some guy is a set of winders these winders work out really well you can see on here that they come in different diameters for the size so what you'll do is you'll get some calipers you'll check the inner diameter of the mainspring barrel and then typically what I do is I pick a half size lower than the measurement that I get so if, if I measure it at about 10 millimeters I'll find my nine and a half millimeters that way it compresses this mainspring a little bit more this is the the barrel I guess you could say what you do is you take and there's actually a jig to make this if it's in here I don't think yep there it is it's part of the, the files that you get this is a jig it's a it's used to bend they they say to use like a staple I ended up using a, a core from a guitar string and you put it in the jig you bend it and then you clip it right at the edges so that it's basically flush this one's a little bit longer here but that probably doesn't matter in the long run that it's just a little bit longer and then you can see that these holes in here are at different diameters so that if you have a a smaller inner hole or a smaller arbor on your mainspring 
then you can adjust where you put this pin. You know, if it's really small, put it in the, the innermost one. If it's one of the bigger ones, you find the, the outermost. Stick it in there like that. And so I'll demonstrate at some point exactly how to use this. But basically you'll whichever way it's wound you want this to go against the wind that way it catches on your arbor your keyhole on your mainspring this is just a, a nail that I was able to push down into here that's what they recommend you do find some sort of a one millimeter this is actually the same thing without the the hole in there. I think this one actually might be for a two millimeter or one and a half millimeter diameter. And if you wanted, you could actually pick up some some of the actual diameter for that. I didn't really care at the time. And then this is the what you use after you've got this you push this in here and then your plunger will push it in kinda of hard to see like I said I'll demonstrate all of this at some point on an actual mainspring you see the inside there what you want to do is there's a couple of, let me show you a better one, kind of a bigger one. The way that this is designed, there's two smaller openings and then kind of a, a more wide open side. When you are pushing this in there, you want that wide side to be what you're looking in. And so you've got your spring wound up in there with the you know this will go on here you will depending on which way it needs to be wound I typically will hold this down while I turn this portion so that it doesn't try and kink out sideways once you've got that done, I'll pull this pull this back out so that when I pull this off, it doesn't try and push that spring out. And I'll hold that out while I grab this. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. Hold it. And then you will push the plunger in. And that will push the mainspring slightly out you can see that there is a small gap there just enough to get it started inside your barrel and then once it's at your barrel you push the plunger and it pushes it into the barrel these work surprisingly well now I did end up having to modify my print settings so that it had a a, a much finer detail a much smaller um, layer height it worked out really well now of course here's some more so yeah here's the other so there's a 2x a 7x a 3x and of course the the 10x that was over there and i guess there's also the 5x i tend to just use the 10x it's much easier this. now opening up case backs that are pop open this is the 
case knife that came in the Harbor Freight kit. I have two of these because I picked up two of those kits. These edges, when I picked them up, were horrible. Flame cut looked like just jagged and not at all good. So I resharpened them, polished them up a bit. It's not as polished as I would like right now, but I've used this quite a bit. And this works out really well. That's the only problem with cheaper tools is that you do have to sometimes modify them to make them work properly. But if I can spend 10, 15, 20 minutes, an hour to modify a tool that I picked up for super cheap compared to, you know, spending hundred and some dollars on a set of expensive screwdrivers I'd rather do that well I guess for now that's about all I have I did pick up a Harbor Freight crystal press that came with a bunch of the dies and of course you know just just your simple everyday press. It's just you know, simple. No frills. Probably don't want to use it on a whole lot of stuff, but it works. As long as you know what you're doing and you don't force things. So... One of the other things that I have done is just get a bunch of toothpicks for pegwood. I took some silicone and tried to make my own little, you know, silicone daubers, pickup sticks, whatever you want to call them. Didn't really work out like I wanted it to. I have to work on the technique to get the silicone on there. That's one of the thicker pieces. I have some that were thinner that work out a little bit better. But my trade is actually CNC machining programming. I've been doing that for going on 25 years. So my set of calipers are, uh, you know, this is a, an 8 inch which obviously we do not need in this hobby but they are extremely accurate and as long as you take care of these they will last a lifetime probably some sort of little dirt and dust in there somewhere but these are capable of reading both inches and millimeters so I can flip between the two and they work really well. Like I said, I'll never have to do something that's 200 millimeters or 8 inches. But that's what I have for calipers on that aspect. I do have multiple sets of calipers and I have some pretty nice micrometers, indicators, things like that. Indicators will probably never be used in this hobby. Um, except for maybe if I get a good jeweler's lathe setting that up. The mat here, just a silicone mat probably one it was a, one off of timu it's super cheap not really anything to brag about but the thing i like about the silicone over something anything else is that typically when you have a small part that comes off it tends to want to stick to the silicone more so, take this little 
it, it wants to stick more to the silicone than it would like a cutting board or cutting mat or whatever tends to and I've had stuff that it see there it's standing up it's kind of hard to see in that angle but it will come off and it will stand up on its edge and tends to not bounce around a whole lot which is good because I've lost quite a few things and I'm stupid enough to do this over carpet so <laughs> makes it much much more fun I've also for parts trays have 3d printed these you can find these on you know your thingiverse and printables these are really I feel like better than most of your ones that you can purchase because there's the number one can be bigger these are good for multiple sizes I tend to put my pallet fork pallet fork bridge and pallet fork screw in this I put my um, balance complete and screw in this compartment I tend to put all of my train of wheels in here most of my um, dial side stuff over here I'll put my hands and my stem in these two and some of the bridges and whatever um, this is typically big enough to put your date wheels and sometimes if it's a small enough movement you can even put your case pieces in there this slides on this is not all that tight but it's not just gonna come off you have to slide it off to get it off and the cool thing about these is they are stackable and they lock into each other so that it doesn't want to come off very easily which can be a pain yes but here's one that I've been working on for a little bit currently trying to find a new click for this it is a Seiko which one is it it's on my rotor isn't it no it's not this one buddy of mine picked one up um, out of India and it's just got a lot of bad stuff going on with it I'm trying to get it working for him but yeah, you can see here that I got my balance and my balance screw I keep those together my pallet fork bridge and screw in there main bridge or main plate in there you know all my uh, wheels tend to go in here this is a lot of the date complications and other you know dial side stuff tends to go over here bridges and like main barrel you can see up here the date wheel the day wheel the rotor and even the, the bracelet all fit in that long compartment works out really well this is a much tighter lid I just didn't post process that one as well as far as those go I've also got a smaller version and that's the great thing about 3d printing for this hobby is that you don't have to have the same size for everything this one is much smaller I can use it on ladies size watches smaller watches and I don't have to take up the the entire bigger one so that's kind of decent 
I have a, another style that I printed off. Don't really like this one too much, but it, it just kind of comes on and off. This is just a pocket watch kind of doing something with. It's nothing to really care about. One other design that I have is this one. This one, the lid screws off, 3D printed threads, so it's a bit more secure, and it's got a fairly decent layout for all the parts to sit. I tend to keep all my train of wheels together, away from all the bigger parts that can bump around and mess with them, and obviously keep my pallet fork and my balance separate from everything else just keeps it from damaging anything so that is kind of just a an introduction of the the cheap ass that I am I don't really want to buy expensive tools Matter of fact, I messed up the lid for this, made it too small on the height, and so now I have a tray that I can now hold my different tools in while I'm not using them. Works out really well. And not just flying all over the place like that. These I tend to keep in another separate box just because I really don't use them all that often. So those go in their own little box. And that's it. Let me know if you guys like this. If you want to see more about my tools, I'm going to be. servicing one of my watches at some point I'm not sure exactly which one it might even post up a poll to see what you guys would think I should look into There's, I've still got a lot of stuff that needs to be done on some most of these watches that I've picked up at different antique stores so one that I'm really looking forward to messing with is this Benris I'm still waiting to get a crystal for this it is a front loader and it does say right there open through crystal it's a really nice looking watch I've taken the crystal off to look at the dial and it's beautiful we'll see that at some point um thinking about maybe one of these issue with this one is that it has radium and that's not really something I want to get into too much um that's just a couple from that box I've got This old jump hour. It does have a pin pallet movement, so it's not the best, but I really like the the jump hour with the sweeping seconds. And we've got this old piece, not really that big of a deal. Lagrand can't remember what movement this has in it but looks like it could be a decent little piece to work on of course the 
thumbnail or the profile pic of my channel is this watch and it is an Ogival I don't know what brand that is as a matter of fact the movement in here I, I don't remember what it is but if you notice the seconds hand down there the sub seconds is not on its pivot and that's because the pivot has broken off in the second hand so I'm going to have to try which I don't know if I will be able to try to find another wheel for that this is a pointer date style watch it is very old I really like the look of it you know it's got the dedicated the fixed bars and the the acrylic is cracked all over the place and it's yellowed and I really I'd like to get this one back into working order um, got a couple of Carvels need some work. This one has a pretty bad cracked glass. Have to source a new crystal for that one. But it is a day date. This one is just the the date. It also has a cracked crystal that I'll have to source with the dials on these are pretty unique I really kinda like the almost candy striping this one has with the red and the silver and even on the hands it's got the red and the silver it's pretty pretty neat looking and this one with these big indicators for the 12 6 and 9 obviously the date for the 3 o'clock this one is just a snapback but it is a Caravelle which is a, a subsidiary of Bulova almost think that this has radium on it as well just by the way that that loom has browned it's not quite black but this one doesn't seem that way the only indicator that this one's actually a tritium you can see T Swiss T this one actually this one is tritium as well so it's not radium too worried about working on that one then. I have picked up this quartz, Seiko quartz, and this one is kind of neat because it has a lion head, and I haven't seen that very often. Obviously, it's going to need a new crystal, but it is a Seiko, and an 8223, I'd have to look up that number to see what year this was. Anybody has any ideas? Let me know. Getting to be an hour into this video, so I'm probably going to end it. Um, like I said, let me know which one of those watches you guys want to see worked on, and I'll do my best to get a video out soon for a watch service the way that the broke watchmaker does it. So, you know the whole spiel, like, subscribe, notifications, all that. I'm brand new, just starting out, help me out. Thanks guys.